Today is day 10 of creating a 3D printing startup business. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake with Cuffflow Prints. And today is day 10, turning my garage into a 3D printing startup business. Now all is quiet behind me right now. But that is soon gonna change because today we finally start getting some of the first products onto these printers. So you don't need this many printers behind me to start doing this type of business. You can start with one, you can start with two. My goal is to be able to scale and meet a certain amount of production at any given point. Now I'm learning the totality and nuances of 3D printing as I go, but I do understand the business side of things. Supply and demand. If you can meet demand with supply at some type of predetermined margin, uh, you have the potential for a business. So prior to 3D printing really becoming widely available to the public as it is today, you typically would be looking at a process more along the lines of injection molding. Injection molding is found in many, many of the common items that you see today. Injection molding is a very expensive process. Um, you have to have large facilities, typically, uh, large infrastructure. Uh, the dyes to create each individual product uh, are expensive, and they typically are only able to produce one product at a time. That's why the different molds and dyes have to be created uh, throughout different production lines. With the technology of 3D printing, you now can take that expensive, laborious process and condense it down into a simplified, accessible version. I saw this trend and I saw this potential, and that's what allowed me to buy into the theory of personalized manufacturing. And I, of course, have done research into this manufacturing process. And what I found was that you can take rather cheap filament and you can create your own products. You can then take these products and present them to a marketplace where with the age of the internet, millions of people can determine if they would like to purchase those from you or not. So today, I'm gonna to be sending our first prints to the farm. Those are gonna take you know anywhere between four and 14 hours to print. Uh, most of them require multiple build plates. So already, all of these 17 printers are gonna be being utilized to print just a handful of products. Uh, again, bringing in that economy of scale issue that I saw as a potential first bottleneck uh, of this business model. But that being said, I'm excited to finally getting printers running and I can now start showing proof of concepts so that if you too are interested in joining this type of venture, you can feel confident in your own capabilities of creating your own products. So let's jump over to my computer. I am going to quickly show uh, me getting the files ready uh, to get them exported over to the printers. And then we will jump back here prior to printing so that we can go over some of the basics to receive the products as soon as they come off of the assembly. Now, before I send everything over to the printers and it becomes too loud to record in here, uh, I wanna get a nice little work area set up uh, to make sure that I can receive the prints once they're done printing. Uh, this is gonna be a standard setup. I'm just gonna have a couple items that I know I'm gonna need for post-production. Uh, and once I get those set up and laid out, I'll explain some of the items that I decided to go with. And then we'll go ahead, get the filament loaded up and get the first prints sent over. So in front of me are some of the basics that I'll be using for post-production and items that I may need during production. Uh, it's very simple. We've got some items like butane torch. Uh, we've got an air duster just to keep things dusted off. Uh, I have some of these uh, which will help start to lubricate the machines. They're so new, I really don't have to worry about that right now. I'm gonna have a receptacle for the filament. Um, basically all the purge PLA, uh, all of the supports that come off and cut off, just any type of waste filament I am going to keep. I do have a recycling 
uh, part of this whole operation that I will be implementing. Some other items uh, that I don't necessarily need, um, but it's good to have around. Good set of calipers. Uh, these are digital. Um, analog works just fine as well. Honestly, guys, when I first got uh, the first printer I was ever using, I got just a cheap little uh, 3D printing all-in-one uh, tool set. You know, and it has all the little things that you may ever need if you don't have any tools. Uh, they're great. You can get them, you know, um, different places like Walmart, uh, Amazon. Um, you can get them online, and, and they are affordable. We have some side cutters uh, to help remove, you know, any of the supports, uh, brims, any of the trees. Some bottles I'm going to be using for alcohol to help keep the build plates clean. In a rush last night, I did send this to the printer which in theory would have been great uh, for today, but I definitely didn't check everything. And it came out probably about a quarter too small. Uh, it's not really the right application uh, for this setup here. Uh, I will cut off probably this bottom uh, piece here. And then once I do that, I'll be able to slide it in It'll be much larger. I can keep some of these items uh, inside of it, which will make the ease of access uh, greater, which will be very nice and convenient. So I'm just gonna get this table with these items pushed off to the side. Uh, that way I have a landing place, and if I need anything during the prints, I can grab it. Uh, next step is I'm gonna start loading the printers with the filament uh, that I know I'll need, the different colors based off of what prints I'm gonna send. So we'll go ahead and get this moved and get the filament onto the printers. So for the first printer, I'm gonna go ahead and load a oak color. So this printer will be the first printer that we use to utilize all of the AMS slots. Uh, it will be a four color print um, so I'm excited to see how this AMS will hold up uh, in this configuration. So let's get it loaded. So in for this print, we're going to be using brown, beige, pink, and white. So if you think you know what it may be, leave a comment and let me know. Okay, so all of the A1s have been loaded. There was only one that was a double plate print, and that is gonna be this printer and this printer. Other than that, all the other printers are one single product. So, you know, we're looking at nine printers, that's eight different products that we have loaded on now. We have two left, so we will throw those onto these P1Ps. Okay, so we successfully have all of the printers that we are going to use loaded. We have nine A1s that are gonna be running, and we have three of the P1Ps. And there you have it. All the printers have been loaded with the proper filament. Now we are ready to go to the computer and press send. I am happy to figure out the workflows that go along with setting this entire farm up. Again, we're using the majority of the printers right now, so I really got a taste on what a typical workflow would feel like. Really not that bad. Even the lower printers in the P1Ps, it's manageable. Uh, you know, there's a trade-off that's gonna be given. You know, I want more economical and less overhead, so I'm gonna sacrifice space. With the sacrifice of space, these are some of the things that I have to deal with, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm happy with the trade-off. So let's get over to the computer, get the print sent, and let's get the first products laid down.
Well, there we go, guys. The first official prints are being laid out right now. And again, these are going to be showcasing the capabilities of this type of technology. It's a very wide range and cross-section of the different applications that you can run these printers through and the potential ideas that you can bring to market. It's an amazing technology. I'm excited to show you all what ends up coming out of these printers. So these prints will print all day today, some of them into tomorrow. But after that, we'll have some items that we can sit down and take a look at. And I can cover my thought process on what I think they may be worth in the marketplace and really emphasize and show the capabilities of manufacturing your own products from home. Well, there we go, guys. Day 10 is wrapped up. Hard to believe that 10 days ago, we didn't even have a single printer set up. And now we have prints being made. We started from one printer in a box, no workflow. And since then, we've developed that. And now we're truly on our way to making this a startup business. So follow along if you want to see the journey. I'm going to be posting for 21 days. Today is day 10, so we have 11 more. In those 11 days, I'm going to want to work out any of the kinks, take you from conceived product all the way to bringing it to a marketplace. That's my goal. My hope is that after this, you'll want to take on manufacturing yourself. Mm -hmm.